Hello everyone. Digital and Analog Systems Electronic circuits and systems are of two kinds analog and digital. The distinction between them is not so much in the types of semiconductor devices used in these circuits as it is in voltage and current variations that occur when each type of circuit performs the function for which it is designed. Analog circuits are those in which voltages and currents vary continuously through the given range. They can take infinite values within the specified range. For example, the output voltage from an audio amplifier might be any one of the infinite values between 10V and plus 10V at any particular instant of time. Other examples of analog devices include signal generators, radio frequency transmitters and receivers, power supplies, electric motors, and speed controllers and many analog type instruments those having pointers that move in a continuous arc across a calibrated scale. By contrast, a digital circuit is one in which the voltage levels assume a finite number of distinct values. In virtually all modern digital circuits, there are just two discrete voltage levels. However, each voltage level in a practical digital system can actually be a narrow band or range of voltages. Digital circuits are often called switching circuits because the voltage levels in a digital circuit are assumed to be switched from one value to another instantaneously, that is transition time is assumed to be zero. Digital circuits are also called logic circuits, because each type of digital circuit obeys a certain set of logic rules. The manner in which a logic circuit responds to an input is referred to as the circuit's logic. Digital systems are used extensively in computation and data processing, control systems, communications and measurement. Digital systems have a number of advantages over analog systems. Many tasks formerly done by analog systems are now being performed digitally. The chief reasons for the shift to digital technology are summarized below. Digital systems are easier to design. The switching circuits in which there are only two voltage levels, high and low, are easier to design. The exact numerical values of voltages are not important because they have only logical significance, only the range in which they fall is important. In analog systems, signals have numerical significance, so, their design is more involved. Accuracy and precision are greater. Digital systems are much more accurate and precise than analog systems, because digital systems can be easily expanded to handle more digits by adding more switching circuits. Analog systems will be quite complex and costly for the same accuracy and precision. Digital systems are more versatile. It is fairly easy to design digital systems whose operation is controlled by a set of stored instructions called the program. Anytime the system operation is to be changed, it can easily be accomplished by modifying the program. Even though analog systems can also be programmed, the variety of the available operations is severely limited. Digital circuits are less affected by noise. Unwanted electrical signals are called noise. Noise is unavoidable in any system. Since in analog systems the exact values of voltages are important and in digital systems only the range of values is important, the effect of noise is more severe in analog systems. In digital systems, noise is not critical as long as it is not large enough to prevent us from distinguishing a high from a low. More digital circuitry can be fabricated on IC chips. The fabrication of digital ICS is simpler and economical than that of analog ICS. Moreover, higher densities of integration can be achieved in digital ICS than in analog ICS, because digital design does not require high-value capacitors, precision resistors, inductors, and transformers, which cannot be integrated economically, like the analog design. Even though digital techniques have a number of advantages, they have only one major drawback. The real world is analog. Most physical quantities are analog in nature, and it is these quantities that are often the inputs and outputs and continually monitored, operated, and controlled by a system. When these quantities are processed and expressed digitally, we are really making a digital approximation to an inherently analog quantity. Instead of processing the analog information directly, it is first converted into digital form and then processed using digital techniques. The results of processing can be converted back to analog form for interpretation. Because of these conversions, 
the processing time increases and the system becomes more complex. In most cases, these disadvantages are outweighed by numerous advantages of digital techniques. However, there are situations where using only analog techniques is simpler and more economical. Both the analog and digital techniques can be employed in the same system to advantage. Such systems are called hybrid systems. But the tendency today is towards employing digital systems because the economic benefits of integration are of overriding importance. The design of digital systems may be roughly divided into three stages system design, logic design, and circuit design. System design involves breaking the overall system into subsystems and specifying the characteristics of each subsystem. For example, the system design of a digital computer involves specifying the number and type of memory units, arithmetic units, and input-output devices, as well as specifying the interconnection and control of these subsystems. Logic design involves determining how to interconnect basic logic building blocks to perform a specific function. An example of logic design is determining the interconnection of logic gates and flip-flops required to perform binary addition. Circuit design involves specifying the interconnection of specific components such as resistors, diodes, and transistors to form a gate, flip-flop or any other logic building block.